my friends. I'm Professor Hans von Puppet. Welcome to Mars. The scenery is quite breathtaking, don't you think? How do I survive in this atmosphere, you're asking? <laughs> well, it's not really that complicated. I do it through the magic of special effects. Hmm? Hang on, I'll show you. There we go. Ah, it's good to be home. Hans vlogs, but not necessarily every day. Oh, Matt Damon's character doesn't have it quite so easy in The Martian. Out this week from director Ridley Scott. You know, somehow I forgot that Ridley Scott had done this movie until his name came up in the credits. What I had been seeing mostly in the media was Matt Damon, the book The Martian that the film is based on, and Mars itself with its newfound wetness. I think that maybe because so many people were disappointed in Ridley's last film, Prometheus, God, it was such a stinker, that the studio kind of downplayed his involvement in this space travel picture. Well, I'll tell you something, folks. Mr. Scott has clearly gotten the message. This film basically is the opposite of Prometheus. Where Prometheus had a cast of grouchy, unappealing characters in a dreary, implausible race to see who could get killed in the most disgusting way, The Martian is a jolly, thrill-filled romp. Sure, the stakes are life and death throughout, but the film has a very, very strong sense of humor. And that is part of what makes the dramatic scenes so much more intense. Okay, the story. Matt Damon is accidentally left behind on Mars. It's kind of like Home Alone, except where they think Kevin is dead and they can't get back for like four years and the nearest neighbor is like a billion miles away. But it turns out he's not dead, just stabbed in the belly by the communications antenna, which is presumably why it takes him several months to figure out how to contact NASA. The Martian environment is incredibly inhospitable, and he uses one of my very favorite things to survive. Science. He figures out how to grow food, how to make his rover go twice as far, how to turn rocket fuel into water, and even how to communicate with Earth. And there's just enough real science in there to make the whole thing plausible, while still demonstrating just how incredibly difficult and dangerous a Mars mission would be. It's so much fun to watch a movie about a really smart, competent character doing really smart, clever things. And Matt Damon's diary vlogs recorded on his many GoPro cameras around the habitat show just that kind of intelligence, humor, initiative, and optimism that we would be looking for in astronauts that we're going to send on long, dangerous space missions. This movie is not just one guy for the whole two hours. You got all kinds of great characters. Besides Matt Damon, who's wonderful, you got Jessica Chastain as the captain of the mission. Oh, and she is really running things in that spaceship. You could have put a male actor in that role and not changed one word of the script. Then you got the Mexican guy from Ant-Man who drives the spaceship. You got Jeff Daniels as the head of NASA. You got the guy from uh, 12 Years a Slave as the mission director. Kristen Wiig is in there somewhere. And even Donald Glover has a great small part as a brilliant, kooky, astrodynamicist. And it's not like Apollo 13 where you know they're going to make it back. This is really suspenseful. Sure, there are periods of the Martian where you think, oh, this guy's got it all figured out. This is all going to work out fine. But then, problems, problems, problems. Mars is terrible, you know. This movie brilliantly rides that emotional high wire of, oh, Matt Damon is a space farmer listening to disco music. How delightful. And, oh, no, he's not going to make it. There's no way this will work. Oh, it is fun and terrifying and emotional and hilarious. And it's this dynamic tension between these extremes that make them all work so well. Sure, there are some extra implausible things. Like, I don't think that plastic top that he duct tapes over the giant hole in his house would really hold in the atmosphere for like two years. And the astronauts in the big spaceship spend a lot of time floating around outside in spacesuits without being properly tethered. I mean, you let go for a second, you just float away into space. And I don't think even the spinning part of the spaceship would be so spacious and luxurious with its crystal-cut glasses and high-end treadmills and all that. And wouldn't they have something newer than GoPros all over the place for filming? I mean, even GoPro has something newer than GoPros now. But this is all just nitpicking. So much attention is paid to the many scientific details that everything you see has that extra layer of believability to it. And really, it's just fun to watch Matt Damon figure out how to survive on Mars. This movie tries so hard to kill this poor guy, you can't help but root for him. This is way, way, way more fun than Prometheus, and a hundred times more space positive than Interstellar, where coincidentally, Matt Damon was also stranded alone on a distant planet. That's kind of his thing now. But in my opinion, it's more fun to watch him growing potatoes on Mars than trying to kill Matthew McConaughey by pushing him off a glacier. 
Yep, that's a big thumbs up from old Professor Puppet on the Martian. Please like and subscribe for more stuff like this. Leave me a comment, tell me what else to do, and tell me what you thought of the Martian. I'm sure there's something you can click around here to find more videos by me, but you're smart, you'll figure that out. Hey, here's a fun fact. The Martian exteriors were all shot in the deserts of Jordan, which with some digital enhancements look a lot like Mars. But the interiors and the stuff around the habitat, they were all shot at Quarter Studios near Budapest, Hungary. That's why there are so many people in the end credits named Gabor, Tomas or Zoltan. <laughs> really, when you go see it, count the Zoltans, I dare you.